Oh, hey, Dad. Can I ask you a question? Why, sure, Robbie. That's what I'm here for. Yeah, speaking of which, aren't you supposed to be, like, at a job or something? <laughs> Listen, Robbie, I'm in between opportunities right now, and so I'm taking that time to build up my personal brand and my social media presence. Hmm. So you mean you're, like, on Twitter all day and stuff, Dad? <laughs> it's it's grown-up stuff. You wouldn't understand. Anyway, what's your question? Well, you remember last time I installed a CocoaPod? Its version number had a squiggly arrow in, uh, in front of it and stuff? I sure do. Well, you never really did tell me what that means, Dad. Why, I guess I didn't, did I? Well, follow me, Robbie, to the wall of knowledge. Oh, you mean that projector screen over there? <laughs> Just watch me. So to answer your question a little better, I probably need to explain to you what semantic versioning is. In semantic versioning, libraries have version numbers that are broken into three parts that look a little something like this. Now let's explore these numbers from right to left. The number on the right is the patch number. As a general rule, anytime an author makes any kind of bug fix to their library that doesn't break backwards compatibility, and let's face it, you shouldn't be breaking backwards compatibility for a bug fix, they increment this number. The number in the middle is the minor release number. Library authors will increment this when they add a new feature, but again, generally if they do it in a backwards compatible way. Now the number on the left is the major release number. Library authors will increment this when they make changes to their code that breaks backwards compatibility. I think I get it. So if you fixed a crash bug in your library... I might change the version number to 148 as long as the change is backwards compatible. And if you added a new feature... I would change the version number to 150. Okay, but let's say you made a fix that changed the signature of some of your method calls. Right, well, that's not backwards compatible, so I might change my version to 2.0.0. Oh, I get it. But wait, you still haven't explained what the squiggly line means, Dad? Well, let's say you have version 147 installed. Would you want CocoaPods to automatically update your library to 148 when you call pod update? Well, that sounds safe, because it's not breaking a change, right? You're just fixing the crash bug. That's right. Now, let's say you have version 148. Would you want CocoaPods to automatically update your library to 150 when you called pod update? Well, yeah, I guess so. I mean, the developers have just added new features. Nothing should break, right? Yeah, that's probably true. Probably? We'll get back to that. So, here's the $64,000 question. Let's say you have version 150. Would you want CocoaPods to automatically update your library to 2.0.0 when you call pod update? Well, probably not. You've changed the major version, which means there's changes in there that will break my code and my project won't compile. Correct. You got it. Hooray! But, what? Oh, what does any of this have to do with the squiggly arrow, Dad? So, the squiggly arrow means that you're okay letting CocoaPods automatically upgrade your library, but only if it increments the last version number you specified. Hmm? Let's say you have squiggly arrow 147. That means you're totally fine having CocoaPods upgrade you to 148, 149, and 1410, but not 150. Similarly, squiggly arrow 14 means you're fine having CocoaPods upgrade you to 148, 149, 150, 162, but not, say, 2.0.0. Well, what if I have squiggly arrow 1? Well, that means you're okay having CocoaPods automatically update your library to just about anything. At that point, you might as well not include any version number at all. Well, that seems pretty worthless, Dad. It is. Just like my brother-in-law. <laughs> and what if I don't want to use the squiggly line at all, Dad? CocoaPod supports a number of operations, all of which work pretty much like you'd expect. Okay, so, hmm. Why would I ever want to upgrade just the patch version? It seems like I should be able to upgrade the patch version and the minor version anytime I want, right, Dad? Well, in theory, yes. In practice, sometimes you'll find that developers do add small breaking changes here or there when they upgrade their minor version. Maybe developers making bug fixes, and it turns out one of their fixes adds another argument to one of their methods. Well, you know, technically, it's non-backwards compatible. The API surface has changed. 
but changing the major version seems pretty drastic here for what's essentially a minor bug fix. And so perhaps they compromise and change the minor version instead. Usually these situations are pretty easy to fix, but they do happen. But doesn't that break the whole semantic versioning rule? Well, yes, but it's important to remember that semantic versioning is just a convention. Nobody anywhere is going to enforce it or reject a CocoaPod that doesn't follow it. And so there is a small risk that your code might break even when only the minor version number changes. So you'll find that some CocoaPod users are only comfortable updating their libraries when the patch number changes. Other developers are okay with updating their library when the minor number changes. It probably depends on how much you feel like living on the edge and how comfortable you feel with a pod developer following semantic versioning. So what about Google? Have they promised to follow semantic versioning in their CocoaPods yet? I think it's safe to say most groups at Google try to follow semantic versioning. But the groups that are part of the new automated CocoaPod publishing process are a little better at it. Well, that'll help me sleep better at night. Say, does this squiggly line have an official name, Dad? Yes, it's called a Twiddlewaka. You're joking, right? I don't joke about things like this. <laughs> so there you go, son. All your questions about the squiggly arrow answered. Don't. Don't you mean the twiddle walkers, Dad? <laughs> <laughs> oh, but seriously, correct me again, and I will cut your fing off. <laughs> Don't you mean the twiddly walkers, Dad? <laughs> <laughs> oh, but seriously, correct me again, I'm gonna ship you off to military school. <laughs>